carbonara sauce. Let me try that. I have tried it and it's a 10. My husband actually thinks this is his favorite sauce. I do really, really love this sauce. I do especially love my chicken fettuccine alfredo though, so it's hard for me to decide, but he does like this more than that. But he rates both a 10. He rates this one a 15, actually. So it's really simple. Let's get started. In my last Let Me Try That, I did fettuccine alfredo and someone asked, where my little elephant was. Now I only take off my ring usually if I'm gonna get dirty, but I'm not gonna get dirty. But let me just do this. That, how does that, does that make you happy? That was just for you. Now that I've got my ring off, let's get everything that we need. Five teaspoons of olive oil. I never measure five teaspoons of olive oil because that's just basically enough olive oil for you to soften the shallots. I'm just gonna set it next to the stove. Four shallots diced. Four shallots. There's two more on the counter. One large onion, thin strips. I'll do that. A pound of bacon. I much prefer thick cut bacon. So we'll use that. A clove of chopped garlic. I'm just gonna use my trusty garlic cream. What is this? Garlic paste. <laughs> Three egg yolks, heavy cream, shredded parmesan. Let's use some happy eggs. Three egg yolks, <gasps> oh my gosh in heaven. When did that happen? <sighs> that wasn't such a happy egg. Heavy cream. You can use any kind of noodle that you want. I like to use a thicker, heftier noodle because I like to grab on to all of the sauce. <sighs> I have something a little in between though, and I don't know that I've ever shown this to the Ube. That's YouTube, and I've combined the words you and tube together, and I call it the Ube. Get with the times. This is what I like to use. It's called Bucatini. I learned it from Jida. How do you say her name? On the Food Network. They have a little hollow center. So the, cr the sauce goes in the noodle. And this is fairly expensive, but I wanted to do something special for my husband because carbonara is his favorite, so I wanted to make it an extra special pasta. I Sometimes I use rigatoni or just any kind of... Those ri regular boxes, regular boxes of this pasta are maybe one to two dollars, depending on where you can find it. This was $2.99. So it's a splurge, if you consider $2.99 to be a splurge, which I do. Put you, oh, you know what I should do first? I should cook the bacon. My favorite way to cook bacon, you've seen it if you've seen me make my breakfast burritos. The way I like to make bacon is just like this, on a baking sheet with foil. I've tried it up on a rack, like Rachel Ray does it. I've tried it uh, several different kinds of ways, but I keep coming back to this because I just like it the best. They say that if you put it up on a cook, uh, you know, the little baking racks that you fit into the sheet, that you don't have to flip the bacon because it circulates, but I can't remember why I decided I didn't like that, but I did try it and I didn't like it. I came back to, it wants a whole pound of bacon. This is a pound. One pound. You obviously don't have to spray with cooking spray because, hello, it's like fat. It'll create its own juices. They'll shrink up in the oven, so it's okay if they touch each other. And I put it into a cold oven, 400 degrees, for approximately 20 minutes or until I can smell it. But I will flip it uh, now and again. It does ask for three egg yolks, so I will just separate these right here. Oh jeez. Have you seen that water bottle trick? Where they suck the yolk out with a water bottle? It's pretty fascinating. I 
I'll save my egg whites for a healthy breakfast in the morning. If your cutting board slides, just stick a towel under that puppy. And she won't slide anymore. These are single-handedly the best measuring cups in the entire universe. I need a half a cup. I've, I was using them earlier, so they are wet. I'm just going to pour a half a cup of my heavy cream in so that I can put the rest of the heavy cream back into the refrigerator. My cute little cat by the stove. I have one cup here. I need three quarters, so I'll just fill it three quarters full. Lord. Fresh grating your Parmesan is where it's at. I'm telling you, don't buy those canisters. Don't buy the pre-shredded. Don't do it. Take the time. your own. Wow, that little piece that broke off will be just enough. Glorious. Do you see the glory? I don't know if I read this somewhere. I know I've been doing it for a long time, but I think I read it somewhere and it confirmed that foil keeps your cheese better longer. Wrap my cheese and put it in a little thing. And I thought I was the only one that did this. You vacuum seal your own bag until I saw Ray on Snapchat. Her mom did the same thing and I died laughing because I do it all the time. I do it to my vegetables. I do it to anything I put in the freezer. And it's like your own little vacuum seal. Four shallots diced. I need to sharpen my knives, but my sharpener's in a drawer that I'm afraid to get into because it's chaotic, and I just don't want to deal. We're about ready to move. Anyhow, so I feel like I just want to leave well enough alone. Look, we've got a little bit of mold. Never fear. Just chop it off. Don't throw away your moldy food. I'm going to set this to medium heat and drizzle about five teaspoons or whatever worth of olive oil in the pan so that it'll get hot and I can just slide those onions and shallots right over. I'll put the recipe down below. I don't have the directions written on my recipe card. I just, I literally wrote the ingredients and then I wrote cook that, whisk this, combine. Because <laughs> it was just simple enough that I didn't want to write down the entire card. But the recipe will be linked in the description for your convenience. We want long slices or long strips. So you can cut it this away and have little rings, which is what I usually do. That thin. Can you see it? About that thin. And then once I have the, the rings cut, just to open them up so that they are strips, I'll just do one cut straight across. And that makes strips. Starting to shimmer. And smoke a little. So I'm going to add my onions. Hands, the best cooking tools around. I'm going to set the lid on this. The recipe then asks that I please whisk these ingredients together. Then it asks for salt and pepper. I honestly don't remember how much, and maybe even on the recipe it just says to taste, but go easy on the salt initially because there's a lot of salt in the Parmesan cheese, and there's a lot of salt in the bacon. Like, maybe that. Sweating out the onions. And we're almost done. 
I'm going to add the garlic after the onions have softened quite a bit. If you add garlic too soon, they say it gets bitter if you cook it too much, so I'm always afraid. I always add it a little later. I almost forgot about the bacon because I almost forgot about it. The onions are nice and translucent. I like to cook bacon so that it is still pretty meaty because if you think about what you want in a pasta, why aren't you focusing? If you think about what you'd like in a pasta, that's an onion, sorry. You'd want something meaty, not crunchy. You don't want something crunchy and crumbling apart in your sauce. I feel like that would be kind of gross. So I always, I ended up cutting off the ends. I thought they were too crispy. They're probably not burnt, but for this I think they were. Like I said, I forgot about, I forgot about them. What I like to do at this point, if you've ever heard people talk about tempering, especially when you're trying to add an egg mixture to something hot, you don't want it to scramble your eggs. What I do at then to help the eggs not to scramble is I will add some of the onions to the egg mixture and stir it around just to get it warm. I have absolutely no idea if that's necessary, but I'm always worried about scrambling my eggs. So I kind of temper it in a way that allows this mixture to get warm enough that the eggs won't scramble up when I dump them into the frying pan. I also turn the frying pan down to low at this point, which I just did. So I'm going to let the frying pan get a little bit cooler, add a little bit more of this, set this aside. When that frying pan gets kind of cool, then I'll just dump this entire thing into the pan. Except I totally forgot about my garlic. My brain is really bad. That's about a clove, what do you say? I'll just mix that garlic around. You can smell it already. The sizzle is starting to calm down so you know that your pan is getting a little cooler. And because my paranoia is real, I like to make a bed in which I will pour my egg mixture on so that it doesn't scramble up. Like I said, could be entirely unnecessary, but I am paranoid and I don't like the idea of accidentally scrambling up my sauce. I'm going to turn the heat back up a little bit. This looks like it's pretty thick, so I'm going to add a little bit more cream. You can add in as much cream as you want. Mind you, if you add in cream, the sauce part will be a little bit thinner. It won't be like a thick sauce, so don't get too crazy. But if you do like a saucier pasta, then just add a little bit more cream. I'm going to taste it. I feel like I can stand a little bit of salt. Curious about this oblong pan, it's a Rachel Ray pan, and the noodles fit the long way. Even though it doesn't fit your burner, the water heats up, obviously, and it's just fine. So I love it for long noodles. Give that water a little sal. This smells super amazing. Really, really does. Taste it for the salt factor. Perf. Oh my gosh, that's really freaking good. Holy cow. And the key here, I think, is to shred your own Parmesan. I just want to eat this like crazy. Don't mind this stuff. It's for my next Let Me Try That. It's a very simple pasta that I often make during the week. The bucatini only takes seven to eight minutes because 
mind you, it is a hollow noodle. I'm just gonna pop. I don't have much counter space, I'm sorry. That's my issue. I'm just gonna pop it all in there. Fits just like that. Amazing. What I'm going to do here is just put this pasta right into the sauce so that it soaks it all up. Am I recording? Oop, there's another noodle. This was an entire box of bucatini. I am going to add a little bit of pasta water. By little, I mean not quite a ladle full. Adding a little pasta water is optional, but I find with this recipe, it's a good thing to do. I am going to try it. No, like I want to say that I like it more than I like the chicken alfredo, but I don't know. If, I don't want to retract my statement, but this is so freaking delicious. If you can see, you can't really tell that there are. Uh oh, you can't really tell that there are onions in there. So if you were afraid of the onions, really just don't be. I mean, you can certainly taste taste them but the strips of onions kind of turn out to be like noodle-like, if that makes sense. Like this is an onion right here, but it's kind of like a noodle. Mm, mm. 